Howdy ho, my crafty friends. This is Lori from Ladybug Journals. Welcome to my channel today. Today we are going to do something a little different. We are going to play with these. Let me show you. I'm moving you over here. Look at these that I have been playing with. Oh my goodness, you guys. Look at these. They have, can you see them? Or is the light too bright? Yeah, for like one second there, we had big bright sunshine. They are resin. Let me see if I can pull you up and maybe get some glare off. They are covered in resin. And uh, this one actually has a flower that I dried on it. This one has some leaves. There, maybe you can see those a little bit better that way. There's another flower. And there's some more leaves. And these are from my garden that I dried. And listen, can you hear? This is resin. And I'm going to show you how I made these little cutie pies. And what I do with them. Um, they're really easy to do. And um, this... This is just a little tag shape that I made. And as you can see, it's multiple layers. Um, these are some others that I recently made. And they're so easy to make that I couldn't wait to share. And this, this is what I do with them. I add charms. And then I add them. Yes, and my hands are covered with ink. I know, I know. Um... I add little charms, I add little pieces of jewelry that I break apart, and then I use them on my spine jewelry, on my journals. I, I just do all kinds of fun things with them. So I had to share with you, see look, it's even on my glue stopper. There's one on my glue stopper, and that's a sticker. I didn't have anything to put on it, but I had to use that beautiful piece. So I just used a sticker. And here's some charms with it, but I had to use it. It's a sticker. So, you know what? Let me try and turn this backlight off and see if that takes off some glare from these since they're so bright. We'll see if that helps. And what are these made of, you might ask? Why, Miss Lori, they're made of brown. I'm going to lift you up a little more so you can see it. Brown cardstock. This is just brown you know, cardstock. That's all it is. And there's the holes I punched. And I used my one inch punch. That's all I used. Actually, I think that's my little one. There's the big one. I just used my brown one inch punch. And I just punched, I just punched circles. I just did this. I went around and I need some more, so I'll just show you. I just punched holes with my one inch punch. Now the bigger ones are with my one and a half inch punch. So it just depends on how big you want them. Um, I just I just sat here one day and I just punched circles um, until I got tired of punching circles and that's what my paper looked like. And then I went through and cut off the edge and just kept going. Um, I've actually, this is my second or third piece of paper. So um, after I did it, now you, we, you could even do it. You remember the flip flop journal we made? You could even do it with the um, with the strawberries um, and the plaid. You could do it with any type of cardstock that you want. It doesn't have to be the brown. Okay, you can do it with anything you want. I've done it with greeting cards. Now, I didn't particularly like this greeting card. But uh, we're going to play with it today and see. It might, it might come out better than what I think. But this is just an old greeting card that, you know, I happened to punch the circle out of. These, these are canvas. This is an old canvas that I painted. And then I used the, the entire canvas. I took it off the, um, what do you call that? I took it off the, the, you know, the board that it's on, this thing. I took it off this, this wood frame. And it was a big canvas that I had painted. And I used that canvas. I cut it up and used it for journal covers and other things. 
But this was the piece that went around here. It went around these edges. You know, after it comes over this edge, there's a piece that comes here and a piece that wraps here that you really can't get to. So I used this piece and this piece. And what I did was I used it to punch these holes and then I cut uh, strips for other things. So I got a several of these and they all look different. But yet it came from the same canvas. These three circles all came from the same canvas. But they were punched from different sections. So I could include them in a journal maybe or on spine jewelry maybe. Um, you know that have these different colors in it. But I just loved them. I just love them and they punch like a dream. Now I'm going to show you uh, what you need to do to make them. And as you can see on this one here, they scooted a little bit. I want to make sure you can see that. You can see how it scooted right here, right here. Well, I'm going to show you how to take care of that. Okay. I'm going to show you how to take care of that. So, um, and then over here, this one did too. That's the one thing with canvas, it scoots. So you really have to be careful with the canvas. Um, so let's get, let's get playing and I'll show you what we do. So what I did find out was the best type of glue for these is either your, um, either a really good glue stick or to use Barely Art or your, um, let's see, what other glue did I find that worked really well? Or your Art Glitter Glue. Those are the two glues that worked really well. Um, I did find that, um, that this one, Fabri-Tac, did not work well. It did not. So I would recommend you not even try it. It did not dry after two and a half days. Um, the paper was still squishy. Um, it was, I could still move it like this very freely. So I would not recommend Fabri-Tac. I also would not recommend a really thin glue stick like Uhu or any of your Elmer's. Um, because they're not going to hold up under the light when we put it up under the light. Or I would not recommend the new Eileen's Tacky Glue that we've been uh, experimenting with. I would not recommend that. You want something you know that's going to give you a good permanent stick that is very strong. Um, so I would either recommend the Scotch if you use that. Or I would recommend the, um, if you use a print stick. Maybe a print stick. I've never used that, so I can't recommend it. So I would recommend the Art Glitter Glue. I would recommend the Barely Art. And before you did it, um, I would experiment with the Eileen's Tacky Glue. I would experiment with it. Maybe try one and see if it dries all the way. If it does... And you get, you get solid like this. You want it solid. You can't move it, okay? It's a solid piece. After it dries for at least 24 hours, then, then you can use it, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to, after you punch your circles, and this is not something that you want to use a really thin piece of paper to build your stack with. You can use that thin piece of paper on the top, like I did with my canvas or with this. This is a really thin piece of paper. But for your stack, you want it to be a nice, thick uh, piece of cardstock to, um, to give you that support that you need. So what I do is I take two of my circles and I glue them together. And I, go, I use eight. So I would take eight circles, two, four, six, eight, right here, okay, and I would just glue two together. And then 
Uh, what I do is I have an old cutting board that stays in my craft room. Um, and in my craft room, then I put a piece of wax paper on it. Um, and here, I'll show you the, shed, the setup for it. It looks like this. So this is what it looks like. I wrap, I wrap my cutting board in a piece of wax paper. I glue my circles together. So I put them here. Oop, let me get a hold of them. Okay, so I would glue these together. And the reason, come on. Uh-oh, I think we're going to have problems here. Or maybe I was just pulling on the wrong thing. There we go. And the reason I put it on this board is, and you want to make sure you get it all the way out to the end, the reason I put it on this board is because maybe I'm working on my glass mat, I don't want my glass mat taken up, you know, with um, with something that now I can't move around. Or if I'm on one of my other workstations, I don't want the space taken up. Well, that one definitely doesn't have enough glue on it. Um, I don't want my workstation taken up with something that I can't move because I'm going to put this under books. I'm going to put this under the heaviest that I can find. I'm going to find heavy books and I'm going to keep layering books on top of it. Um, and I'm going to leave it that way for 24 hours. Um, you leave it that way for 24 hours. Okay. So after 24 hours, I'm going to come back to them, to my, to my four stacks of two. And after, after I come back to them, I'm going to check them and make sure that they don't wiggle. If they wiggle around, okay, so here they are, my four stacks of two that I've just glued together. Now I'm going to cover them up with the wax paper because I don't want them to stick to my books. And I'm going to put them someplace else. And then I'm going to put my book on them. So let me put these over here. And I can put my books on them. Okay, I have created a book stack with um, holding my, my things that I just punched out. Okay, so now after I take them off, um, I'm going to have four stacks of two. And then I'm going to repeat my process. And then I'm going to have two stacks of four. And then eventually I'm going to have a stack of eight and it's going to look like this. Okay. And after I'm sure that it sounds like this, it's good and solid. I'm going to punch my hole in it. If, if I want to use it as a dangle, if I just want to use it as page decoration, I'm going to leave it alone. I can punch two holes and make it a button. You can do whatever you want with it. Now I will tell you, you have to put your holes in it first before you put the resin on it, okay? So make sure your holes are in it where you want them before you put the resin on it. So now's the time to take a look at it. Does it need sanded anywhere? And I think this one does right up here. And I'll show you right here. Because as you saw when I was gluing them, they do scoot a little bit. And I don't mind rough edges. I like the rough edges. So I'm going to sand this a little bit. And this is also going to be your chance to put any decorative papers on the top that you want. So after you after it comes out with your stack of eight, there we go. And you could leave it like this. You don't even have to resin this because it's solid. This is solid. So you don't have to resin this at all. You're, you're good to go. There we go. So from here, from this stack, you can now glue on here before you put your hole, glue on your decorative paper, whether it be a piece of your, um, your canvas, whether it be a piece of decorative, um, decorative paper. Like I have a piece of this decorative, um, this is paper that 
I made with my jelly plate. I could glue that on there. Uh, I have another piece of canvas. I could glue another piece of canvas on there. You know, there's so many different things that I could glue on top of it and then put it under the book. Oh, I do think I like that piece of canvas. This has pink in it. So I could put that on there. And then here's one of my yellow flowers that has snuck out. And then I could come back with that pink and put the yellow flower on it. Like that. So, or I could save this yellow flower and bring it over here into the green. Well, you little devil. Come here. I could save this yellow flower and bring it over here into the green. Like that. So, you don't have to resin these. Um, these with the canvas, I'm not going to resin. Um, I am going to clean up my edges. But after you get your top piece on, that that's the time to do your, your inking. After you decide what you're going to put on top. Now, you can also, as you um, saw on some of these here, I've stamped in my background. Um, before I did anything else on my top my top piece. Um, I took this whole piece right here and I lined it up with all of them I had finished and I just stamped. Um, I stamped them all. I took out a stamp and I just started stamping whatever, whatever I wanted for my background. And the only reason I resined them was because of the plant material. I wanted to keep that plant material. And this is just a little piece of uh, violet that I dried from the yard. I just wanted to keep the plant material in there and that was the only way I could do it. Um, and I dry flowers every year. Like here is some lilac leaves. Oh, that's gonna smell so good. Here's lilac seeds. These are um, lilac leaves and violets. These are violets. That one's trying to escape. And here's little buttercups. I love saving little buttercups. I think they're so pretty. Um, and then I have I have tons of them from my garden that are drying now that'll be ready for the spring. So now that you know how to make them, you can make these little things too, and you can make them however you choose to make them. And here's what I was telling you about not drying. See how this has separated right here. I need to go on and take that piece off because that piece will not work. So now's the time to look through my, my stack here and make sure that all my pieces stuck because this is a thick stack. I don't know what in the world I was thinking. Oh, yes, I do. This was the piece I did with the, um, with the uh, Fibertac. And it would not. So this is the piece that I'm going to have to spend some time on sanding. Because this piece with the Fabri-Tac, it would not um, get stiff. And I knew if I put resin on it um, of any kind, it would not dry. It would buckle up. And I don't think I have one of those that buckled to show you. Um, because they are not very nice. They separate and they're useless um, once they separate. So I'm only going to uh, probably resin one of them with, with some. Put that one over there. Okay, so now that we've got this one cleaned up here, let's try this big thick one here and see what it does. But I want to show you how to add had charms to them. All right, let's get this cleaned up. Let's get this big stack cleaned up. Okay, so now that our stack is cleaned up, let me wipe off the workspace so I don't get that in anything. There we go. Okay, now let me get my let me get my anchor here. Now the little resin kit that that um that I'm using you can buy you can buy online. It is not expensive. Um, 
and you need to read all of the warnings and you need to make yourself the responsible consumer. Um, I can tell you what the warnings are, um, but you have to be the responsible consumer and you have to follow those warnings. I can't hold your hand and make sure that you do that. Okay, so I'm going to tell you how I do it and I'm going to expect you to do the same. Okay, there's my little coin inked up. Now, I'm not going to put anything on that since it's oxide because it will run. So it needs to dry. So we're going to put that over there. And we're going to put these over there for now. We're going to use the ones I have prepared. Let's see this one. This is another thick stack that I use Fabri-Tac on. Um, I thought it would work, but it didn't. But this is a tag shape. I have a little tag shape sponge. Okay. So we're going to go on and get to work here so I can show you. I'll work on that. Okay. And this, this is just, this is a very thin piece of cardstock. And as, I don't know if you can see sticking out here. Let me see if you can see sticking out. I just used the back of packaging to get the size of circle that I wanted. Can you see that, that bar sticking out right there? Um, to get the size of circle that I wanted, um, I just used a piece of packaging until I got the, um, the weight of circle that I wanted or the size of circle that I wanted um, because I didn't have a punch to give me the size that I wanted for something and I wanted this to go on to uh, some spine jewelry for my journal that I just closed up um, so that was the only way I could do it okay so this is the one we're going to do and as you can see, it's not as thick as the others. Okay, let's ink it. And I'm just going to have to take a chance on this one. That If it runs, it runs. I don't know, I don't know how this one's going to work with this oxide on it. It might run all over the place. Okay, and as you can see, I'm working on a Teflon-based um, space here because this will stick. Um, so whatever it gets on, it gets on. You, you can't get it off. Okay, so I've got to pull my sleeves up. All right, here. And I'm just going to use my little jewelry tools here as my, um, as my tweezers. Okay, so I think I want this little thing here. Now let's get out some Let's get out some little leaves out of this one. Now you don't want to put in your, um, like your, I can't think of what they're called. Okay. You don't want to put in your rings until you're ready for them. Yeah, I don't want any of that. I just want this little leaf. Now, if you're not into, you know, into uh, dried flowers and things like that, then by all means, don't, don't use those. But like I said, you can use different types of, um, of cardstock if you want, or you don't have to do it this way. You can, um, you can just be done once you get to this spot right here. You're done. Um, okay. This is still a little thick down here. So let's break that off. Now, you don't want things that are real thick. Uh, because it won't, it won't lay flat. All right, let's see if we can get this, get this little buttercup to behave itself here. Uh, sometimes I have to use... All right, we're going to have to grab our tweezers here. Here we go. Yeah. Those big tools just weren't working. And let's grab another buttercup. Yeah. I love saving envelopes that I get things in. All right. Where did it come in? And that's what this one is from. 
It just happened to be long enough when I got some some stickers. All righty. Let's see here. I know I'm not going to need all of it, but I want a big one. And what I do is I, after they're completely dry, I put them in these bags and then I use these bulldog clips and I hang them. Um, and that keeps them from breaking and getting squished around. And All right, let's see what we can get here. I see the one I want. It's right here on the end. This one. This is the one I want. Okay. I want that piece. And I want that piece. I don't want this piece. Okay. Okay, that's how we're going to put it. Now, sometimes, there are times when you have to, you have to do this. You have to get it in place, then you have to take it back out. I know, it seems counterproductive, doesn't it? But to keep it where you want it, you have to put just the tiniest drop of glue, kind of like this, Find your spot again, and then put it down, because the resin will make it wiggle. And this leaf is what's going to wiggle, like that. So we're going to glue our leaf down. So it doesn't wiggle and it's just a little tiny dot I'm not I'm not gluing it down you know like I would on a page I'm just putting a little dot to hold it where I want it like that And it still allows me to move a little bit, but it doesn't, doesn't move all over the place. There we go. Okay. There we go. So, now, what I'm going to do is, and, um, is what this kit looks like is this. This is what the kit looks like. Okay. So I'm going to hold it here. Here, I'm going to move you up so you can see it. Okay. And it's fast curing, low odor. And I'm going to show you what comes in the box. So in this little box comes the light, the curing light, 
and the cord. It comes with all the resin that you're going to need to do the project that we're doing. It comes with one, two, how about we turn this light down? I think that's where our glare is coming from. Comes with those two bottles. Plus, it comes with three bottles. It comes with a pour spout. It also comes with your instructions. It comes with measuring cups, stir sticks, and spouts for all the rest of the bottles. So, as I said, I'm going to leave it to you to be good consumers to follow the regulations and the guides that are set forth on the pamphlet. It's not my responsibility if you don't follow the instructions. So you need to follow the instructions precisely. Uh, otherwise you will get hurt. Okay? So I'm going to leave that to you. Now, I will tell you to use caution when you use the light because it is a UV light and you do not want to point it into your face. Um, you want to make sure, you also want to make sure that you don't turn it on until you're ready to use it because the light will cure any resin that is any, anywhere around um, that it has any contact with. So make sure that you don't plug it in until you're absolutely ready to use it. Um, I made that mistake and cured some on my on my other workspace. So it's permanently on my other workspace. Okay, so uh, so it is not plugged in right now. All right, so let me move my work uh, my jewelry tools out of the way so I don't get resin on them. And it comes out slow, so you do, you can guide it. Um, it's not just going to, you know, jump right out of the bottle. It does come out slowly. So, um, and I started keeping a pin on the back of my bottle. Um, only because it, it does clog up occasionally. Okay, and this is the bottle with the nozzle on it. When, it, when you first open it, it doesn't have the nozzle. Okay, so you start in the center. And you make slow circles to fill it in. And anything that you have on it, like flowers, leaves, there we go. You fill those in first. And if you have a hole punched, then you come up around your hole and around your edges. Oops, I just filled in my hole. So now I have to, before I turn my light on, I have to make sure that the resin is out of the hole. And 
then you continue around. And I also have to make sure I have it off of my shirt or off of my hands before I turn the light on. Okay. Once you have it filled in, you make sure the cap is back on and you set it aside. Whoops. Okay, my hands are cleaned off and I will clean that off. Let's lift this up. Oops. Well, I'm just filling it in every time I clean it out. Okay. I'll have to figure out another way to repunch my hole then. All right, let's wipe off our table. And it is sticky. It's um it's a sticky liquid. Wipe off our tools. Wipe off my hands. Okay. Now, to use the light, yeah, my hands are wiped off. I'm going to push this and get these charms out of the way. Oh, darn. I'm just going to be cleaning up all day, huh? to push this back here and let me lift you guys back here so you can see what I'm doing I'm cleaning up a mess is what I'm doing okay let me clean this off again I'm going to it has little legs so you open the legs and then I'm gonna when once I plug it in, I can't show you anymore. Okay. So you sit it over top of it. Let me untwist the cord. So you sit it over top of it, and then you plug it in. So I need to cover it. I'm gonna have to cover the light with this towel so I don't harm you guys. Okay? And it only takes a couple of minutes. There. These are fun to do. Um, but you do have to follow the, uh, the directions. Let me bring you guys back here away from camera view. Oh, you're still in camera view, aren't you? Let me get you out of camera view here. Give you something more fun to look at. There. There, you can kind of see the pink glow. There. So for my jewels that I'm going to use, Or I guess not jewels. Here, let's get our let's get this out. And we'll get this out. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these this piece of um earring here. And what I want to do is on these on these right here. I want to add a piece of this 
to these is what I want to do. So that it kind of hangs down like that. Okay. And when I'm done with them, what I do is I have these little bags. And I just keep them in there until I'm ready to use it like that. Okay. So let's put that back there. And let's work on this. I think that's about done. Almost. So. Let's see how we can do this. Alright, I think the best thing to do is to get this off. Let's take this earring back off. And I think if I can open that up, I can just take this earring off. And uh, get getting all wrapped up here. So let's see if we can do that. I don't know if I can see that or not. But let's see if we can do that. If we can open this piece up right here. Yeah, my hands are not very strong today. Alright, we might just have to cut it didn't want to cut it if I didn't have to. Let's see if we can bend it. Oh, here. Now it's moving. Okay, let's try this piece here. Oh my. I wonder if they soldered these down. Wow. Come on, you get down. All right, let me switch hands here. Where is it? There it is. All right, it's moving. It's slow, but it's moving. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I think that might be a little too big. We might have to take that off of there and put it on something else, but I would like that. Put them like that. All right, I think that might be done. And I have some beads. Oh no, they got tangled up in my Let me put my glue dangle in there. I have some beads to put on that one. There we go. All right, let me unplug this here and let's see if this is done. There we go, all done. So, let's see if we can poke through this little thin piece. Oh, yeah, it poked right through that little thin piece of resin. Ooh, we soaked right through it when I poked through. Now, you can see the different layers. That That's a little thin piece of cardstock. Yeah, I might have to, I'm going to have to turn it over to dry the back. So, let me turn it over here and get the back dry. And then I can, I can show you. All right, so let's work on this. So let's see, what are we going to put on it? I think on this one, I want a butterfly. 
on the, um, I need to wipe my hands off here. On the one with the leaf. Um, let's put the glue here. On our, on this one here, I want to put this little heart. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. This little heart has the tiniest little butterfly on it. Let's see if you all can see it. Can you all see that little butterfly? And I want to put that somewhere. Because I just thought he was just the cutest little thing. So maybe, maybe we'll put him right there. And um, maybe we'll put that there. And... Let me grab my charms here. Here are my butterflies. Here are my ladybugs. There's the ladybugs. There's the butterflies. Okay, so I got, let me get a hold of this here. There we go. So this is dry, front and back, and you can see the different layers of paper and where it has scooted. And how our flowers look. And this right here is where I'll sand and then I'll ink. And it looks like I need to, oh, this has a really cool texture to it. Okay. So these are the ones that we're working on here. So on this one, I was able to cut this long piece of the earring down and I just added it to this little bulb pin. Just like that. And I think that will be fine. Let's see if it'll fit. Oh yeah, fits good. So there's that one. And I think on this one, I'm going to add the purple and a little ladybug charm right here. And then we're going to glue our little heart on. But first we need to cut this long piece down so I'll show you how I did that let me get some of this stuff out of the way here okay so what I did was this is that long pin so I just let all the charms fall and I cut off you know where I thought I needed And I didn't, it wasn't a lot that I cut off. Where is it? And then I took my, my short needle nose. And I am not very good at this. I will tell you that right now. I'm not very good at this at all. But I just keep plugging away at it. And I make a loop. There we go. And then that. And the ladybug will go there. So what are we going to put it on? Are we going to put it on another bulb pin for now? So we could put it on a bulb pin. But we could also... Let's add to... Let's see here. Let's add to the ladybug... Let's give her a little jump ring. Let me get a hold of one. Yeah, these little devils, they just... Okay. Let's add a little jump ring. We'll let her hang down a little bit further. Okay. And we'll let her dangle a little bit more, I guess. 
and then we'll add these guys. There we go. There's that one. And then we'll put our little bulb pin through. Okay, I'm trying to find the hole here. Is this another one I closed up? Feels like it. Yep, looks like it. Okay, this, this is what happens when you let your resin fill up your hole. There we go. You can do it. You can't get through it, but it is it's not the easiest thing to do. So let's put our bulb pin through there. There we go. So there's our ladybug. Let's see. I think she could go the other way. Let's put this on first. Actually, how about we put our bulb pin in? No. Yeah, that hangs right. And then our ladybug. Like that. Yeah, I can never get things to hang right on, on these things. All right, let's get this in here. Come on, guys, get in the hole. Let's turn her around. There we go. There. So now we've got the purple in the ladybug. And for the little bumblebee, I found a little bumblebee in my stash. I thought the little bumblebee, oh wait, we wanted to add to this our little heart, didn't we? I forgot. So let's get, let's pick up our little heart. I forgot about our little heart. I just saw him laying there. Let's see if I can, well, I can't pick him up. There we go. Let's put some glue on the back of our little heart. And I don't remember if he was going on this one or not, but he is now. Because that's where I put him. There we go. So there's our little butterfly on there. Okay. Now our little bumblebee, I also want to give him, now he's got a little bit of a, of a ring on him, but I want to give him a little bit more. So let's give him a, a little jump ring. There we go. And let's, oh, let me put this in here. Okay, let's make this a little bit shorter. I want to thank you all for joining me today in my craft room. It's always nice to have friends to craft with. Even though I know you're not, you know, you're not physically here with me. It's, um, it's nice to have people to craft with. And, um, if you enjoyed today's video, I hope you like and subscribe to our channel. So we have a, a challenge going on, or I set a challenge. There we go. That, um... There. That's still a little long, isn't it? I could add some more beads to it. Um, that we would reach 300 subscribers by, um, when was it? When was it, you guys? By March 
that we would reach 300 subscribers by March. And the only way that I can do that is with your help. So um, if you're not, if you are a subscriber, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you um, for doing that. I appreciate that so very much. Um, if you haven't taken the opportunity to push that like and subscribe button yet, you've just been kind of hanging out going, well, I don't, I'll think about it maybe the next time. Well, here's your chance. Um, if you would hit that like and subscribe button um, and help us reach our goal, I would appreciate that so very much. Ooh, I just had a I just had an idea, you guys. I wonder if this little butterfly, if we could glue him on there. I don't know. I'm gonna have to research that. Um, I would appreciate that so very much if you guys would do that. Oh, that's backwards. And help us reach our goal. Um, that would be so fabulous. And you just do not know how much I would appreciate that. I mean, I, oh my gosh, I would appreciate that so very much. I did it on this one too. So if you would do that at the end of this video, and then you can tell your friends about us, and you can let everybody know how much you have enjoyed <laughs> all the silliness that goes on here. Like, you know, she puts resin in the holes of her, of her projects. Um, but you can also tell them about all the fun projects that we do. We make all kinds of fun journals. You guys have learned all kinds of great things to do. And I would appreciate that so very much. So, until we meet again in our next video, this is Lori at the Ladybug Journals saying ta-ta for now. See you later.